Tonight we're going to talk about cluster, or we're going to talk about OCD treatment, and we're going to hook it up with, I know that none of you in here worry, right? <laughs> Nobody watching this uh, away from this setting ever worries and you're not afraid. Well, tonight we're going to talk about your worry and your self-talk and you're afraid. We're going to give you a concrete way of dealing with that in a, in a very coaching modality. But first of all, let's take a look at OCD and why it is so uh, important to us. I'm, I'm very interested in OCD because it was working in working with sex addicts that I discovered that the, the work that I'm doing now in happiness. I think I, I may have told you, if I didn't tell this group, I took the, told the other class, that I had the opportunity about, uh, oh, I don't, I don't need to tell you how many years ago, uh, to begin to, about 15 years ago, to focus on sex addicts and to look at, first of all, it's very hard to find sex addicts, really true sex addicts. Uh, a lot of people think they're sex addicts because they like sex. If you like sex, you do not have to start worrying right now. <laughs> some, people, some people just have a strong libido, a very strong libido, and it can also go from a strong libido to using uh, sex to get rid of anxiety as a release. None of that signals sexual addiction. When we're talking about sexual addiction, we're talking about it causing you to lose a job, to threaten a marriage, to spend all kinds of money on prostitution, to hang out in, in pornographic bookstores, to be unable to exercise control. And one of the things that I found in doing the research that I was doing was the left frontal lobe was very involved in sexual addiction. But aside from that and the journey it it's sort of accidentally put me off onto is that the left frontal lobe is also very directly involved in happiness. It is the seat and core of happiness. And I'll give you a diagram uh, later on in the course that shows you just exactly where that place of happiness is located in the left frontal lobe. But as we look at this, this uh, issue of OCD where people turn doorknobs or they have to go back in and check the knobs on their stove a hundred times or they wash their hands until the skin uh, comes off of their hands. Those are the very observable things. We don't hook OCD up uh, because it really doesn't fit the, the manual description of OCD, but there are people who, who may not be rubbing their hands raw, but the thinking that's going on, the self-talk that's going on in your head, I'm a terrible person, I'm a lousy person, this role of the self-talk can be as abrasive and even more detrimental than washing and rubbing the skin off of your hands because you think you have been contaminated. Contaminated thinking is far worse than contaminated hands that we, we have to keep washing and keep washing. And with all of us, we have to realize that I think it's important to see all of these things on a continuum. In fact, today we speak about spectrum disorder. And spectrum disorder means that we want to see disorder on a wide spectrum. For example, bipolar. You can put bipolar someplace along this spectrum, and if there's more stress, then more bipolar is going to show up. But if somebody is bipolar, or if somebody is, say, addicted or alcoholic, we want to put, just like we want to put localization places on the brain, this is the right frontal lobe, this is the left frontal lobe, this is psychomotor, we want to do the same thing with this is OCD, this is uh, Tourette's syndrome, this is this, this is this, this is this, and it just ain't true. Because the brain doesn't know, well it knows that we're doing that kind of labeling in a way, but it isn't like one leaves up, one takes up where the other leaves off. If you're an alcoholic, for example, you're going to have some OCD. If you, and, and you're going to have some, some uh, a, 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 say a, a move on this spectrum perhaps towards ADD or ADHD or a move on this spectrum towards perseverant thinking at the other end of this spectrum because all of these things happen in clusters they never happen just alone all by themselves that's why it's difficult to treat is that we're getting a cluster of things that are affecting all kinds of different parts of the of the neurological system so when we're talking about obsessive compulsive disorder and I, I say, okay, on a scale of one to 10, washing your hands every day is way out here. But if we pulled washing your hands from a 10 back to a five on this, on this spectrum, what does a five look like? 
if tin is, is scrubbing the skin off of your hands, what does sort of OCD at a five look like? What would that look like? And that's what I did with the sex addicts. We knew that we had a condition called orbital frontal syndrome, where people had left frontal lobe injuries and they were doing all kinds of acting out sexually. And so I said to myself, this is the way I got onto it, I said to myself, if that's on a spectrum, that's a 10, I wonder if sexual addiction is somewhere back here at a four or a five, and if it signals left frontal lobe dysfunction. And so that was sort of the hypothesis that I was working on. But at any rate, with OCD, when we talk about obsessive, uh, obsessive behavior or thinking, we're also talking about that kind of obsessiveness that's self-talk. We're talking about thoughts that don't leave us alone. We're talking about worry. Really, we're talking about worry on, say, a three to a four to a five. That, that habit, and it really is, believe it or not, a habit. Worry is a habit. Most of our fear is a learned habit. It's habits that we have learned. If you are an addict, for example, one of the big fears of an addict is, it, one of the big things of an addict is fear. They, they report a lot of fear. They have a lot of fear about this, a lot of fear about that. But what they don't see is the whole time that they started using drugs or the whole time that they started drinking or whatever it was, one of the things that the body learned and the brain learned, because you know, not necessarily when you start using these substances is your body going to be your friend. Not necessarily is your brain going to be your friend. It's going to go after what it's used to and it's going to go after what it wants. So when the body wants a drug that a person is addicted to or alcohol, it's going to create the need for that in all kinds of ways. From anxiety, by being anxious will create that need, by being, by being um, a worrier will create it will create worry to be able to get what it wants and th the brain will create fear because fear will very quickly get a drinker or a drug user to use the drug because they are afraid. The, the use has conditioned the fear that the brain knows and the body knows that if I get afraid I will, get, I will be able to drug. And so a habit gets started. 